Hey George, is it really true? I heard that your wife is a cripple with a fake leg. Tell me, is that real? I mean, I know you're just some bricklaying schlub, but isn't that a bit pathetic even for you, man? Hi Oliver, I don't really want to talk about this with you. Please don't bring it up again. <laughs> Chill out, man. I was just joking. I just couldn't believe it. That's crazy. I don't mean to be rude, but let me say this. I really don't mind if you say anything about me. But please, don't ever badmouth my wife. I won't allow it. Come on, man. Can't you take a joke? Lighten up a bit, will you? And let's get this straight. I'm just stating the facts here. I'm not wrong. So quit being so uptight all the time. Is there something that I can help you with, Oliver? Ah, did I touch a nerve there? <laughs> How amusing. I may be your brother-in-law, but I also happen to be the new president in case you're living under a rock. Are you really thinking about starting a fight with me over something as trivial as this? Well, let me tell you. It's a battle you won't win. Loser. I just don't really see the connection this topic has to do with work. Oh, there is a connection. Trust me. Let's review here. You are contracted by us to do manual labor, correct? Yes, and what about that fact? Well, if the president of a company that you work for suddenly sours on the idea of working with you, that wouldn't be good, right? Excuse me? Well, it would be an absolute disaster for your business if I were to cancel my company's contract with you. Can you even comprehend the magnitude of the damage? Oh, and trust me, if I wanted to, I could easily reach out to other business owners I know and warn them about what a colossal failure you are so. They'll never hire you. Are you threatening me? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Nothing at all, of course. On the contrary, I think I've only done things right. How else could I have gotten this far? That's a rather rich comment coming from you, by the way. I'm not the one working on my hands and knees every day, barely ecking by doing manual labor. And to think the only woman you could get to marry you isn't even a whole person. Just some cripple. Unlike you, your sister is such a catch. She's a freaking supermodel. Sorry. Is there anything I can do for you right now? Are you finished insulting me and my family? Ah, uh, how adorable. Is that really all it takes to make you back down? Pathetic. You don't even have the guts to try and fight back? Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, what else can you expect from someone as brainless as you? Who can barely manage manual labor? Stay in your lane, loser. I just don't really see the point of continuing a conversation like this with you. Aha! I see the truth now. You're just too scared to face me because you're too busy worrying about your poor crippled wife. It's a smart move to be concerned about her. I'll give you that. So here's a friendly piece of advice. From now on, why don't you keep a close eye on yourself? Excuse me? What are you talking about? You're always scheming to snatch more contracts from my company and gain control over the work, aren't you? That's my job. I'm the almighty president. Got it? You? You're nothing but a lowly subcontractor peon. So stop trying to stick your nose where it doesn't belong and stay out of my way. I'm sorry. I really don't understand what you're talking about. But I can guarantee you that it was never my intention to do any of the stuff you're accusing me of. Can you believe it? There are actually people who work for me. The president. And they have the audacity to seek advice from you instead of coming to me. It's absolutely unacceptable. Oh, and let's not forget, it was you who had the nerve to give orders to postpone our completion date by a whole week, wasn't it? Who the hell do you think you are? Telling the company to change their own schedule? Ah, you're referring to that. I understand now. The original schedule was unrealistic and couldn't possibly be met. So I had to review the schedule and merely put in a request to adjust it accordingly. Well, we're going back to the original schedule. Finish your work by the third like we agreed. I'm sorry, but that schedule will be impossible to meet. Your schedule pushes our workers too hard. 
The human body has limits. Oh, so that's the case, huh? Well, here's an idea for you. Why don't you try working three times as hard? Or are you just too lazy and incompetent for that? Maybe you'd prefer losing the contract altogether and not working at all. How exactly do you plan on feeding your poor feeble wife if you aren't even capable of working? Okay, fine. I understand. I'll come in on my days off and personally supervise the work. Will that be enough? Are you satisfied? Try asking me again once you finish your job. Okay, I will work as hard as I can to make sure that your demands are met. But all I ask in exchange is that you please lay off making comments about my wife. <laughs> for sure, for sure, of course. To be honest, I'm already sick and tired of your sorry existence. Making jokes about a couple of poors who were made for each other gets old real quick. Continuing to talk about your pathetic life would only make me feel sick. I won't do it anymore. As long as you manage to pull yourself together and ensure that the job gets done according to schedule. Got it, loser? Hi there, George. How has your wife been doing? Hi, Betty. Carol's pregnancy is going well, thank you. She is in her final month now, so it seems that we've made it through the worst of it. No need to worry about things now. Haha, <laughs> yes. She pretty much told me the same thing. But of course, I can never stop caring about you two and want to make sure you're okay. I mean, Carol gave her own leg to save my son. Well, she always says that it's an adult's job to protect children. Gosh, I love that woman. I am just so proud of her. Neither of us have regretted what happened, even for a moment. She's an amazing woman, yes. And you do have my sincere condolences. That is quite okay. It really wasn't your fault. If only that drunk driver hadn't sped his car onto the curb. But it's already been five years, if you can believe it. Anyways, I don't think there is any more need for you to apologize. I'm always happy to hear from you, but please don't feel guilty about anything anymore. Let's just be friends. You're such a sweetie too, you know. Anyway, I hear you've been bullied at work. You've heard about that? Yes, actually the other day I happened to be walking by the construction site. Ah, you saw us talking, didn't you? Well, yes. Yes, I did. It really was a coincidence, I swear. But my goodness, I couldn't believe the things he was saying to you. I couldn't believe how much trouble he was giving you. Anyway, there wasn't much I could have done for you from there, which is why I'm messaging you now. Well... I am very sorry you had to see that, although I guess it couldn't be helped. But, Betty, I mean this with the utmost respect when I say that it is my problem and not yours to deal with. Well, I am sorry, but I see things differently. I think this is a problem for me as well. Oh, I see. And why do you think that, if I may? Well, it's just... Seeing him treat the people who my family owe so much to so terribly... It just made my blood boil. I couldn't stand to watch it. I see. And do you happen to know the current president of our primary client? Yes, actually, I do. We have had a run-in once before, about seven years ago to be exact. I remember he drove my crew as hard as he could to get the job done. Oh, I see. I wasn't aware of that. I guess not much has changed since those days. And then... To watch that man do the same thing to you, making you work longer hours for nothing? It's just horrible. I was thinking that maybe we could find a way to get back at that creep. Oh, that's really not necessary. I can handle things. Thank you very much. The only thing I want you to worry about is your own happiness. Meanwhile, I can take care of the situation with the client. Thank you so much for your concern, though. I see. Well, the decision is ultimately yours, dear. In any case... If you ever need me, I am just a message away. I already have a plan in mind, you see. If you change your mind, that is. I came to see how construction was progressing today. Did you know that your crippled wife was hanging around? I was so mad looking at that woman that I couldn't hold it in. Well, yes. She said she would come by to drop off my lunch, which I forgot at home. Why? Did she do or say something? Oh... I see. Is that what spilled all over the floor? I literally thought that was feed for a barn animal or something. 
I still can't get over the fact that you would do a thing like that to your wife. Just think of all the precious life you wasted with a woman like that. Well, that's what you get for marrying her though. What are you talking about? Did you do something to my wife? Oh my god. It was so freaking funny. You really should have been there. Just the way that broken person fell over and hit the floor. It was a real riot. I think I even cried a little cause I was laughing so hard. But don't take it too personally. I was mad so I just wanted to lash out at her. What the hell is the matter with you? My wife is pregnant. Even just looking at her, you should have been able to tell. What? Are you seriously going to be having a kid with that freak of nature? I suppose I was so busy being disturbed by a creepy fake leg that I didn't even notice she was pregnant. <laughs> well, if something goes wrong, I hope you remember to come crawling back to me and thank me for helping you prevent the disaster waiting to happen. You mean if something happens to my unborn kid? What kind of monster are you? Well, that kid of yours would undoubtedly be some kind of freak, wouldn't it? Do you really want to know why my son is already so much better than your kid? It's quite simple. Really, he inherited my superior genes. While your kid is stuck with whatever pathetic genetic material you have to offer, all I did was reduce the number of freaks in this world by one. You piece of living garbage. I always knew you were a terrible person, but I never thought you would stoop so low. It's absolutely sickening. And to think that someone as vile as you is also a father to some poor kid. It's a tragedy, really. That innocent child deserves better than to be tainted by your presence. You make me sick. Ah, what's the matter? Are you getting upset? Are you going to cry like a little baby now? Well, there's nothing you can do about it. And let's face it, it's obviously your wife's fault for missing a leg. I mean, isn't it just disgusting how she's not even a whole person? I bet anyone who looks at her feels the same way. Please, just stop all of this. How can you even live with yourself? Why are you bragging about assaulting a pregnant woman like it's some kind of feat? Of course. The only one who could love a one-legged woman like that is some poor, dirty laborer like you. I guess I was just so disgusted by seeing her that I kicked her without even thinking. That's it. I swear I will burn your company to the ground. What are you talking about? I lost my patience with you a long time ago. I won't hold back any longer. I am going to pulverize you. Excuse me? Are you threatening me right now? How on earth is some insignificant peon like you even supposed to have a chance at crushing my company? Your delusions of grandeur are laughable. You're nothing more than a mere ant that I'd gladly squash under my boots. Oh, I have a way. Don't you worry. I won't let you hurt any more people the way you hurt my family. And tell me, just how exactly you plan on taking my company down? What? Are you going to bring a hammer to the office and dismantle a brick by brick? That's probably about the best idea a moron like you could come up with. The cops will be on you before you even walk through the office doors. Just you wait. You'll get what's coming to you. Why aren't there any day laborers working at the construction site right now? I went to go see how things were progressing. And there wasn't a single person there. What is going on? Don't you realize I'll break my contract with you for this? If you don't want that to happen, you better get every single person you have back here right now. I've already ended my contract with you. You what? And besides, your company doesn't even exist anymore. What did you just say to me? Did you hit your head with a hammer or something? Have you lost your mind? You'd better start making sense right now or else. What I'm trying to say is that your company is effectively bankrupt. What? Do you even know what that word means? How can I be bankrupt when I'm keeping the company afloat with the money I got from my dad? Well, didn't you hear? There's a warrant out for you right now for assault. So any contracts other companies might have had with yours have all been cancelled. Assault? What are you even talking about right now? You punted my wife's fake leg and made her fall over. You're very lucky our unborn child is okay. 
But still, assault is assault, and we are pressing charges. I always knew you were a moron, but you're even worse than I thought. Fetuses don't have any rights. So how could I have assaulted it? And your wife's leg is fake. It's not flesh and blood. So again, how could it be assault? It's not like I kicked your wife's one real leg. Do you really think that matters? Now who's the moron? Hey, you better watch it. Or what? You're going to attack me as well and make things even worse for yourself? I told you I didn't attack your wife. I just kicked a prosthetic, not a person. Try telling that to the judge. See how far it gets you, you vile excuse for a human. Are you being serious right now? Of course. We already filed a report to the police. You did what? So I really don't think you have much time before they get there and arrest you. Okay, okay. I get it. I promise not to badmouth your wife anymore. Is that enough? Can we call off this little game? I learned my lesson. Just please go to the police and retract your statement. As if I would ever do that. Especially now. You clearly haven't learned any kind of lesson here at all. Well, sitting down and thinking about my feelings and if what I did was wrong doesn't really suit someone like me, don't you think? I've been treated like royalty ever since I was born. Never once have I had to apologize. I'm not sure I even know the definition of that word. Except when I make people do it to me. <laughs> well then, I guess we'll just see how your highness fares in a jail cell, won't we? Hello? Are you listening to a word I'm saying right now? I get it. You've made your point. I'll stop talking about your wife, okay? What else could you possibly want? Do I have to pay you or something? Just give me a figure and I'll write a check and we can finally be done with this nonsense. I don't want your filthy money. Oh, so what? You're just after justice or trying to protect your honor or something? Listen here, you poor ape. I'm offering a blank check, so just say a number and stop all this chest puffing. I don't need any money, you buffoon. My family owns the Apex Construction Group. Wait, as in my parent company? Yes, that's right. I was just doing some apprenticing as a laborer at one of our sub-companies to get some practical experience. But the company is run by my two older brothers. And let me tell you, they have saved me a seat at the table. So what you're telling me right now is, you are going to be on the executive board for our parent company? That is it in a nutshell, basically. Yes. And you. Well, you just happened to be the guy who kicked one of the board member's pregnant wife. Wait, wait, wait. This is a big misunderstanding. Let me explain. Anyways, I had the brilliant idea of liquidating your crappy company and scrubbing it from our affiliates. So I went to my brothers and suggested we do just that. They were so furious about what you did that everyone agreed to do it on the spot. Are you for real? That's not all, though. To replace it, we decided to start a new company under my name. The new company will take over all the projects and workers that used to work for you. Anyways, because things are kind of crazy at the office with all the paperwork, we decided to let everyone rest and pause for a second. And what will my position be at your new company? Huh? Excuse me? You want to know about your position? I wonder what kind of work you think you can do from jail. It's probably best you just continue being the president of a now defunct company. No, no, please. You can't do this to me. I have a son. How am I supposed to care for him without a job? Huh? I would have never guessed that a piece of garbage like you actually cares for his offspring. Well, he's the bearer of my superior genes. Please, he has to be taken care of. He's supposed to look after me and provide for me when I get old. So please, whatever you do, don't hurt my son's future by letting him get involved in this. You'll ruin my life plan. What do any of those concerns have to do with the well-being of your son? You're just trying to leverage him as some kind of insurance for when you're too old to work. Alright, look. How about we just be men about this and have a healthy sense of competition in the workplace? It'll be fair and square. I knew you would say something like that. And yet, I'm still upset that you even suggested it. 
What about you is supposed to make me think that you've ever done anything fair and square in your life? I've never met someone as spiteful, conniving, and downright awful as you. And to think that you treat me and my family so horribly, even after you owe us so much. I... Oh, you? No, I'm really lost. What are you talking about? Do you remember Betty? How do you know her? Anyways, it's not like I have anything to do with her now. You broke up with her because she was a single parent, remember? So you tossed her aside and chose to marry your supermodel wife instead. And what's the point of any of this? Why bring her up? Well, our mutual friend Betty has a son who's turning seven this year. Seven? Let's try counting back seven years. Hmm. I think that was about the time that you broke up with her, isn't it? Do you need me to spell it out for you? No, you can't be saying that. You mean that kid is mine? By the way, as long as we're on the topic of kids, I think you should know that you aren't actually the biological father of the son you had with your wife. What are you talking about? How could you say that? It really only took a little bit of investigation to figure things out. I guess your wife herself used to brag about it all the time to her friends. She said the real father of her kid was some sexy male model. That... can't be. And that she was just letting you think that the kid was yours as a way to get closer to your wallet. I mean, surely you've had your suspicions, no? After all, it's not like your son looks anything like you. My head is spinning. I don't know what to think. You mean to tell me that the little boy that I have so lovingly been raising isn't even my son? And that I do have a son, but his mom is the girl that I dumped for my wife? That's not all. Five years ago, Betty's son was in a car accident. And the person who protected him with her own body was none other than my wife. That's how she lost her leg. That can't be. So then her fake leg is... That's right. Now you're getting it. My wife lost her leg while she was protecting the child you fathered. Betty told me everything. Then what have I... Oh, God. But I guess it's far too late for you to do something about that now, huh? Just think of all the precious life you wasted. Well, you made the choices. Here's the result. Afterward, Oliver underwent a DNA test with the child he believed to be his son. Disappointingly, the results revealed that the child was not biologically related to him. It was a devastating blow for Oliver as he had already lost his company and discovered that his entire family life had been a lie all in a single day. Following an arrest for assault, he made every effort to reach out to Betty and her son, desperately pleading for a chance to meet the child. However, by that time, the young boy had reached an age where he could comprehend the events unfolding around him. He expressed to his mother that he had no desire to meet his deceitful biological father. As for me, my wife gave birth to a healthy child, and my new company is thriving. Both my father and older brothers are impressed with my accomplishments. It's a testament to the law of cause and effect, where actions have consequences that eventually catch up with us, whether in personal or professional matters. That's why I consistently strive to treat others with politeness and respect in all my interactions.